Plants also integrate their body systems to coordinate growth, respond to light, and regulate their development. In this video, we'll focus on tropisms, phytohormones, and the coordination of growth in plants. Let's begin with tropisms. Tropisms refer to directional growth responses in plants. Tropisms can be positive or negative. Positive tropism results in plants growing toward the stimulus. A negative tropism results in plants growing away from the stimulus. Shoots of a plant exhibit positive phototropism, or growth toward light. At the same time, shoots exhibit negative gravitropism, or growth upward and away from gravity. Tropic responses in seedlings can be measured both qualitatively and quantitatively. A diagram could be used to record observations of seedlings and their response to a stimulus such as light. Quantitative data could also be recorded, such as measuring the angle of curvature of seedlings and response to a lateral light source. As mentioned before, seedlings demonstrate positive phototropism. Positive indicates a plant grows toward the stimulus, and photo and phototropism refers to light. When seedlings are exposed to lateral light, shoots bend toward the light, maximizing photosynthesis. This occurs because plant hormones cause the side of the plant away from the sunlight to grow faster, which causes it to bend toward the light. Plants control these directional responses by phytohormones, or plant hormones. Phytohormones are chemical messengers that coordinate plant growth and development. A variety of chemicals or phytohormones are used in plants, including auxins, which promote elongation of a plant stem, as seen in phototropism. Plants also have cytokinins, which encourage cell division, and ethylene, which triggers fruit ripening. These hormones are plants' internal communication system. Auxin, in particular, is essential for phototropism. Auxin is a key plant hormone that regulates growth and development by promoting cell elongation. The cells in a plant coordinate to get high concentrations of auxin in areas where it is needed. If sunlight is lateral to the plant, then the side away from the light will need to grow faster to help bend the plant toward the light. Auxin efflux carriers play an important role in this process. Auxin efflux carriers are transmembrane proteins that pump auxin into cells. The efflux carriers can move around within the cell membrane. The cells can coordinate and move the auxin efflux carriers to one side of the plant, which will help establish a high concentration of auxin in that region. If the light source is directly above the plant, auxins will distribute evenly in the shoot tip. As a result, cells on all sides of the shoot elongate at similar rates, and the shoot grows straight upward. In contrast, if light comes from the side, Auxins redistribute to the shaded side, causing asymmetric cell elongation and curved growth toward the light, positive phototropism. How does auxin actually promote elongation? What's actually happening is auxin promotes specific genes to be transcribed, which leads to the synthesis of proteins, specifically of proton pumps in the cell wall or the apoplast. These proton pumps will cause hydrogen protons to move into the apoplast and lower the pH. This acidifies the cell wall and activates enzymes like expansins. This leads to the loosening of the cell wall structure and allows the cell to stretch and grow. That's how the shoot bends toward the light. Growth must be balanced between roots and shoots. And this is where hormone interactions come in. Shoot tips produce auxin, which travels downward to the roots. Root tips produce cytokinin, another phytohormone, which travels upward to the shoots. Sometimes these phytohormones work together, and sometimes they work antagonistically, where one can inhibit the other. What is important to remember is that the use of these phytohormones is coordinated to ensure proper shoot and root growth, depending on the stimulus. For example, if a plant's shoot is growing vigorously, maybe due to high light exposure, it produces more auxin, which travels to the roots and promotes root growth to support the shoot. We also see that high levels of auxin from the shoot tip suppress lateral bud growth, or growth out to the sides. Cytokinins produced in roots promote lateral bud growth when they reach the shoot. So if the shoot tip is removed by pruning, auxin levels drop and cytokinin can now stimulate lateral buds to grow into new branches. Gardeners use this coordination of phytohormones to change the shape, size, and productivity of fruiting trees and bushes. Finally, let's look at fruit ripening, a classic case of positive feedback. Think about the changes you've seen in a fruit as it ripens. These changes are caused by the hormone ethylene. Ethylene, or ethene, triggers the ripening process in fruits. It causes color changes, softening of the fruit, and sweetening of the fruit by conversion of acids and starch to simple sugars such as fructose. As fruit ripens, it produces even more ethylene, 
speeding up the process. For example, let's take a look at these apples. As an apple ripens, it produces ethylene. The ethylene will signal nearby apples to also begin to ripen. As nearby apples ripen, more ethylene is produced, causing even more apples to ripen, hence the positive feedback. Fruits serve the purpose of seed dispersal. They attract animals. Animals eat the fruit, but the seeds are indigestible and are carried off and dispersed in the feces of the animal. This positive feedback of ethylene production ensures synchronized ripening within a single plant, which is advantageous for seed dispersal. Plenty of ripe fruits are available and attractive to animals at the same time.